this is only strange because the law enforcement made it strange. You are listening to the Roberta Glass True Crime Report, putting the true back in true crime. From New York City, Roberta Glass is now on the record. Okay, how is everybody? Wanted to talk to you today about Netflix new documentary special that they have up on their platform called American Nightmare. And it's about the kidnapping and kidnapping of Denise Huskins and Aaron Quinn and, of course, Huskins S.A., by a man that turned out to be Matthew Muller. And it is a wild story, but I think there is a deeper message behind it and for its and a deeper reason for its appearance on the Netflix platform. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today, about the story. And it's... I started out with the clip of Aaron Quinn saying, this is only a crazy story because the police made it crazy. And it's really interesting in this documentary. It contradicts itself all the time as far as message. Are, is this a crazy story or is it not a crazy story? Is this a bizarro kidnapping the ch- the chances of it being real being or being regular <laughs> i think being being in the odds of one in a zillion or is this a more regular event And there was major, major issues with the police investigation. They concluded way too quickly that it was a hoax. It wasn't. Sorry, there's going to be a lot of spoiler alerts for those of you who haven't seen it. But I think the issue at hand is were the police totally off base to be a little suspect of this wild, wild story. So I am not going to uh, apologize for anything that the police did. They've already done that. So this docuseries has already sparked so much outrage. People demanding that the police department apologize they have publicly demanding that the detective on this get fired but i would argue that we've never seen a story this out there before and and had you told me this story i would have had an eyebrow definitely raised for, for one, let's talk about things that we don't normally see in kidnappings. We normally don't see the predator call the victim by his or her name. We don't say, uh, we don't hear about kidnapping operatives. So Matthew Muller was presenting himself as a team of kidnappers, professional kidnappers. And they, and he said he had targeted Aaron Quinn's original girlfriend. So we don't see that too often. We don't see them appearing in wetsuits. So the you saw in the, uh, the 
trailer I played, the police asking what did they swim in? It's so bizarre. The use of tasers, the use of substances. So when Aaron Quinn is eventually interrogated, he is on substances. So he's not having the usual reaction an innocent person would have, which is, you can't accuse me of, be, of killing my girlfriend, Denise. And we don't see a kind of door-to-door -door service. So Denise was returned to her parents' home miles and miles away from where she was kidnapped. So she was picked up and then dropped off at her parents' house when she was released for no money. So we don't... So when it came out that the perpetrator of this was a Harvard-educated lawyer, not the usual suspect or not the usual perpetrator either. But all this, I think, we are meant to forget in order to, and this is where I think Netflix is going with this, to sell the idea that that the impossible does happen in true, true crime stories. And not only does it hap happen, but it happens more often than we know, and that the real heroes are going to be the defense attorneys who believe you. So we've seen Netflix put out really bizarre true crime narratives like Making a Murderer and... Now it's a American Myth, their fictional series on the Central Park Five. And before you come at me, I would encourage you all to read the transcripts of those two trials. There is a lot of evidence against those five besides the, conf uh, besides the confessions. So we are supposed to believe that these things happen and that we can't have tunnel vision that the police are planning evidence, perhaps, all to solve a crime really quickly, or the police accuse someone, it went on to convict them, and it was all from a tunnel vision investigation. So I think that is some of the reason it's preparing us for the next really wild Netflix series, <laughs> true crime series, that is going to try to free a convicted killer. And they've been on board with this agenda since the beginning. They have so many series. The, uh, the Confession Tapes is one. The Innocence, I think it's called The Innocence Files. I mean, they are deep into it, and I'll explain a, a little bit later, but let's first look at some of the reaction that this docuseries has sparked off from the general public. We covered this story in real time, and now Netflix is shining a new light on it. The Vallejo Police Department is facing new criticism since the recent release of the Netflix docuseries about the kidnapping and sexual assault of Denise Huskins. This happened back in 2015. NBC's Jody Hernandez explains this series has prompted a backlash. Do you know where she is? The docu-series American Nightmare that chronicles the bizarre Vallejo kidnapping case of physical therapist Denise Huskins is topping the Netflix charts. The series uses footage of videotaped police interrogations to show how police initially tried to pin the crime on Huskins' boyfriend, Aaron Quinn, who was tied up and drugged by the kidnapper. And when Huskins was finally released, police then said... So I think there's a major difference... So they tried to get, when you find blood in someone's home and their story is really wild, and nine times out of ten, it's the boyfriend or husband who's responsible for a woman's disappearance, they were trying to elicit a confession. But please note that this did not go farther. He wasn't prosecuted. 
he was just, this couple was just really put out to dry in the media. So they sued civilly, they sued the police civilly and won a $2.5 million judgment. It was all a hoax. And they were victimized by a psychopath and then victimized by the Vallejo Police Department. Quinn's former attorney, Daniel. Yeah, I would agree with that, that assessment. Daniel Russo says the series exposes real problems with policing, especially at VPD, which has been riddled with scandal after scandal. They have to completely revamp that department so things like this don't happen because it's not a fluke. The true crime hit has led to some serious backlash on social media. The Vallejo Police Department's Facebook page is now filled with comments like, apologize to Denise, and this department is a joke. I started watching it and I just stopped. I couldn't. I figured out that I kind of had uh, VPD PTSD. Um, it started just making me really anxious. Former longtime Vallejo City Council member Stephanie Gomes says the criticism the show has generated is warranted. She says the department has been riddled by corruption for far too long and needs to be overhauled. If the badge been Wait, how is this how is this story an example of police corruption? Ineptitude or or jumping the gun, but I don't know if I'd call that corruption. And you notice that they're saying, oh, this happens, and they haven't given us one other example yet. So I'm not I'm not disagreeing. I'm not really familiar with all these scandals in this police department's history. But I do know that they have had new police chiefs since then and have attempted to do things in a different way since this. Whether they're successful or not, I don't know. Bending story didn't do it. And the shooting of um, people in our community didn't do it. Maybe a Netflix um, story will do it. I can only hope. Meanwhile, Russo says he's proud of the couple for speaking out about their victimizer, Matthew Muller, and the trauma they also endured by police. But they're never getting over this. They're always going to have PTSD from what happened, the savage way they were treated. We reached out to the Vallejo Police Department, but we're told they have no comment. In right, which is a real mistake in the way that they're handling this. They should, they should come out and uh, apologize one more time. And I, I will get to their... I'll get to their apology. Hello, Miss Lisa. It's Miss Lisa. Thank you for gifting 10, count them, 10 memberships. Wow. Thank you. Appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to It's Miss Lisa's channel, you are missing out. So let's look at, did, did they apologize or not? Or let's just look into this a little bit. And then, I'll, and then I'll talk about the ideology of the people at Netflix and how it's all connected. I hope you're following along. I hope you don't have too many questions. So here's some interesting details. One, they've written a book, and they wrote it with Nikki Egan, who, who broke the Bill Cosby story way back in 2003, and I interviewed her for this podcast, but he faced additional charges. And here's the social media backlash. In the years following the case, the social media backlash against the Bahalo Police Department had has been massive. Angry social media users took to Facebook, X, formerly Twitter, and more to express their disgust towards the department, current and past Facebook posts to the Vallejo the Police Department have angry comments from users and even death threats. So this has been going on since then. Yelp has an increase in angry. He acted, this is kind of interesting, he acted alone, but Denise and Aaron are were convinced at the time that they saw 
more than two, two legs. Her testimony in court. So a new police chief took over the department in 2015. Uh, the, they've had numerous police chiefs have come and gone since then. The current interim police chief, Jason Ta, has been with the department since 2021 and has had an extensive background in police work. Andrew Biden, the chief involved with the case, retired in 2019 after facing criticism about police misconduct. Oh, what a despite the city claiming he wasn't being forced out because of this. Um, Biden was also accused of changing the written sergeant's exam to lower the standards. They're doing that in New York as well. In 2019, Shawnee Williams took over as police chief. And Williams has also issued an apology to Denise and Aaron on June 5th, 2021, for the department's mishandling of their case promising to make sure survivors are given compassionate service with dignity and respect. Williams also mentioned that a public apology from Badu and the department following Mueller's indictment did not occur despite letters from Badu to the couple claiming otherwise. Williams eventually resigned as chief in 2022. So they have been apologizing. So (laughs) I just think by leaving that out, they know, they know the effect that these Netflix specials have on people's lives. And to not include that, I think is really wrong, but okay. But I think the point is, is to get us ready for another making a murderer. Crazy things happen. And they they happen when the police have tunnel vision and don't consider these really wacky theories like there there was a police chief. This is the Stephen Avery's current theory, the subject of making a murderer, the convicted killer of making a murderer that someone waited in the bushes, watched him shave, and planted his blood. (laughs) I mean, come on. But this is the narrative of this special. Crazy things happen, and the only one who can believe you is the defense attorney. And why I think Netflix has this ideology, let me show you real quick, is the wife CEO has been contributing to Soros DA. So what's a Soros DA? So George Soros is a billionaire philanthropist who had the idea to create an equal justice pack of $50 million with George Gascon. And the idea was that they were going to run former defense attorney for district attorney. And so that instead of having a district attorney who represented the people and represented the victim, now what we have in cities like Philadelphia, Los Angeles, New York City, is two defense attorneys talking to each other in court. There's no one representing the victim. There's no one representing the people in general. It's just a court totally focused on the defendant or convicted or the convicted's interest. And that's a real problem because our system works in opposition. So here's a little background on that. And then uh, I'll, I'll uh, c- show you how it's connected to Netflix. This is from the Daily Signal. This is just a short thing on Soros DAs. The rogue prosecutor movement stems from the basic idea that the entire criminal justice system is racist and has pro-criminal anti-victim zealots bought and paid for by George Soros and tech billionaires. They adopt pro-criminal policies. They choose large 
categories of crimes not to prosecute. In Fairfax County, which is near Washington, D.C., Steve Descano is the rogue prosecutor uh, elected in large part because of George Soros money. He, George Soros contributed 75% more or less uh, of the total amount of money Steve Descano got to his campaign. Without Soros money, Steve Descano and these other rogue prosecutors simply would not have been elected. The prosecutor in the American criminal justice system occupies a unique role. Her job is to enforce the criminal law of the state legislature as passed and signed by the governor or the federal law passed by Congress and signed by the president. Their job is to do justice. It's not to get convictions. We have an adversarial system in our country. You have strong, ethical prosecutors representing the people, and you have strong, zealous criminal defense attorneys representing those charged with crimes. Rogue prosecutors. So I think what's so, so sinister and cynical about what they did, what the Equal Justice Pacts do by putting in these rogue prosecutors, is that no one on my side who's very pro-victim would say, don't don't give these defendants real, real defense attorneys, give them former prosecutors who are going to work against their best interest. No one on my side of the <laughs> side, sitting on this side of the aisle would say that. But for this movement, it's by any means necessary. It doesn't matter if it totally corrupts our justice system and how it works. Just get it done. We want we want the policies that we want, and this is how we're going to enact them. It doesn't matter how how dark it is. Upend that. They uh, erase the wall between prosecution and defense by taking a pro-defense, anti-victim stance refused to enforce large swaths of crimes across the book under the guise of prosecutorial discretion. It has nothing to do with prosecutorial discretion. And as a result, crime explodes in the cities where they've been elected. Right. Crime explodes. And then you get, this is how Adnan Syed got out. Marilyn Mosby was being prosecuted. She just got convicted for fraud. She was on her way out the door and she let Adnan Syed out on ridiculous two two ridiculous pieces of evidence one was the dna on Heyman lee's shoes the victim's shoes in her car not even on her feet and the other was a the wife of the mentor of adnan syed her description of adnan syed himself so adnan syed got adnan syed he's the new suspect who got him released absolutely absurd and insane for example in Boston, uh, Rachel Rollins, the rogue prosecutor of Suffolk County, lists on her website 15 crimes you can commit in Boston. That includes possession with intent to distribute any drug, resisting arrest of a police officer, breaking and entering a house. The irony is that the people who are getting murdered and raped and robbed the most are black and brown poor people in the inner city. The very policies they promote are the policies that are causing death and destruction and rapes in the very cities they pretend to care about. Right, and that's the irony is that these are usually pretty rich people. And one of these rich people is the CEO of Netflix founder, Patty, uh, Patty Quill Quillen. And let's take a look at what she did. She, uh, she, Gave a lot of money to Larry Krasner's campaign, the DA of Philadelphia. And she also, here, let's see, so you can see, she bankrolled a group, group bankrolled, this is from Fox News, group bankrolled by Netflix CEO's wife pours six figures into effort in, to save far left San Francisco DA from recall. Patty Quillen's wife, Netflix CEO, gave $1 million to a group backing Chesa Boudin, who was the son of the Weather Underground terrorists, domestic terrorists, and he was eventually thrown out of office. So it didn't work, but she had her whole a whole group 
and she's the wife of Netflix. Patty Quillen is the wife of Netflix CEO Reed Hastings. So I think we're going to see more of this on Netflix. And I think this is what this is really preparing us for. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Oh, the the Philly D. Yeah. Larry Krasner has been a disaster. So I would ask you all to pay attention to who's running for district attorney if you're living in the U.S. Because this is a really dangerous, dangerous thing that they that they're doing. And Los Angeles, they have a really hot upcoming hot race against George Gascon. So, so pay attention. But that's where I think it's about. I think it's about a crazy story and to convince us that more crazy stories happen and that they convict people. So they're not going to look at the differences in this story that these, that the accused in this story could back up everything that they were saying that they weren't changing their story. They didn't have a scary criminal background like someone like Rodney Reed or Stephen Avery. But this is going to further the narrative that if it can happen to these people, it could happen to you. And that our justice system is unfair, racist, wrong, and that, and of course, and criminalizing the police, which is a favorite thing that our media likes to do. When's the last time you saw a positive story about the police in, in U.S. media? And I find it very interesting that uh, Detective Mustard in this is really painted as the villain. And, and if he were a... Defend, if he were a defendant, he would, if he were a defendant, they would be, instead of a police officer, they would be falling over themselves to, to, to defend him. So it's just very interesting, depending on what, where you're sitting. If you're in power, you're going to be terrible. And if you're the accused, you know, of course, <laughs> of course, you're going to be wonderful, accused or convicted. So that is what I have for today. Just a quickie. I'll be back tomorrow at 6 p.m. to talk about another true crime subject. Have a great night, everybody.